Okay, so this is my latest droid project. It's the ID-10 uh, tactical probe droid from Battlefront 2. I got the model off of Etsy. The body was painted or printed on my FDM um, Maker Farm Pegasus. And then the legs and all that little stuff is done on my uh, resin printer to get the uh, detail and stuff in there. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of finishing work to do on that. I've got the other antenna being printed. Uh, I've got some carbon uh, rod coming in to make the mast of the antenna because the printed one in resin is just entirely too weak to uh, withstand any sort of manipul like accidental contact or anything like that printed the domes except for the clear one which was cut from like a, a clear uh, Christmas ornament thing which the BB-8 builders have been doing for for a while it's got inside I've got a 2000 milliamp 7.2 volt battery single servo I've got a custom shield wired to an RGBW LED a couple of uh, other always on LEDs including that center one there as well as the headlights are separate and they can change color along with the ring light the ring light being RGBW has a few more options available to it so I've basically been able to go with like default white red and then like green for a response in the affirmative and then red without headlights for a response in the negative the shield that I designed has the ability to support a second servo although I'll be honest I don't know where you would put that there is so little space in there it's using a Bluetooth transceiver and a PlayStation 3 remote um, like K9 does to uh, do everything um, and I can make more detailed information available there's one little software bug that irritates me, but um, I built a reset switch, which I had to bodge. You can kind of see there um, in order to uh, facilitate a workaround. For whatever reason, when this thing initializes, the Bluetooth module doesn't seem to come up quite right. I don't know if it's by virtue of the fact of, that it's a Chinese clone of an Arduino ADK or what but when it boots up from power like no power it uh, seems to generate erroneous data causing the body to spin and stuff like that you have to hit the reset button to reinitialize the software and then the Bluetooth transceiver which you can kind of see blinking back there comes up and I can get a link it's a really weird thing I'm going to do some more software troubleshooting, but nothing I've been able to do so far has generated any results. Uh, you can see a few uh, rare earth magnets there to couple the dome lid onto it. And uh, yeah, there you go. When it boots up, it goes through a diagnostic routine, which I'll show you now by hitting the reset button goes through cycle all colors headlights and then it'll blink twice blue to indicate that the onboard serial controller initialized successfully and then it runs a uh, positioning routine which by the looks of it I got it correct uh, you can then uh, start the pairing cycle or sequence it'll grab a hold of it and then it changes the uh, read our eye to white headlights white there's also a little because there's so little room in there I don't think I could really do a uh, sound trigger with an amplifier and a speaker even a couple of watts speaker 
I mean, arguably it might be possible to mount up to there if it was really, really small, but I went with an integrated uh, little buzzer onto the board itself. And uh, that part, I, I was able to get online some examples of some music, including like the Imperial March. Um, oops, sorry. Just launched a positioning routine there. There we go. And then we got... There's also the ability to do random movement. So it'll cycle itself. It'll move so far, wait a random period of time, and then move again a random period of time. Random speeds, the whole nine yards. And then you can just disable that. Bring it back around. There's two button combinations to position it forward and then position it backward. Inside the, uh, on the underside of the main brace, which is this thing, there's a couple of Hall effect sensors that can pick up on magnets built into the uh, axial support and I'm able to determine uh, forward and rear position. That way I can tell it to instantly go forward or instantly go back. Um, looks like I've got to switch the wires though because when it booted up it went to the rear position not the front position. So that's just switching the cables around, no big deal there. And that's what happens when you uh, don't label the board satisfactory to determine which one. But anyway, um, so far, I think that's about as good as I can get this. Uh, I'm hoping to build a mount system that'll allow me to attach it uh, to a back brace so I can wear it and hang it off my shoulder. But uh, yeah, all in all, it can do uh, scanning routines where it fades out the white. Do the same thing with the red. In fact, when the random routine initiates, it starts a scan red uh, animation as opposed to just white. And then the body or the legs and stuff all have like little. Uh, almost like Chicago screws, so I can position the legs any way I want. And, uh, yeah, okay, so that's full. So far, I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, except for that weird, goofy initiation thing where it pulls erroneous data and forces me to restart it after power up to get it to pair correctly. But after that, it works a treat. Um, don't know if it's the Bluetooth adapter or the board. I've tried other Bluetooth adapters but it didn't it didn't even pair up with the remote so meh is what it is. I've got fiber optics ran to the rear as well so I can get little colors off those back little bumps which I've seen on some models. Um, but yeah. That's my ID10.